how to optimize your content for Google. Short introduction to myself, my name is Christopher Wagner. Um, I am an SEO, I do a lot of technical SEO. Uh, my hobby is killing penguin penalties. That is particularly funny because uh, we are going to see that I apparently have been hit by a penguin penalty. And um, I am um, a member of the Joomla SEO team. My customers are a lot of shops, uh, holiday home rentals, and for the smaller customers, I tend to use Joomla. In my presentations, I always have a part where I talk about what's currently happening in the area of SEO. Um, this right here is the crawl stats from Google Webmaster Tools of Joomla.org before the Google Penguin penalty uh, um, update, uh, excuse me. And um, what uh, we see here is that Google started crawling uh, Joomla.org heavily on the 10th of October. By the end of October, the Penguin update was fully rolled out. So. I presume that uh, crawling the whole web takes Google about two to three or four weeks. In that essence, that's a very interesting information. In the German SEO market, we see a lot of um, the websites that have been uh, doing excessive link building and have been hit by a penguin penalty uh, recover because, of course, they have uh, removed the bad links or built new ones. Uh, one of the very famous examples is home24.de. What you see here is the visibility index of Systrix. Systrix is a company that tracks rankings and their visibility index is composed of uh, about 250,000 keywords that they are tracking. Of course, these keywords also have search volume and uh, one of the basic uh, understandable rules is that a visibility index of one gives you about a thousand uh, users a day from Google on your website. Same goes for uh, DSL Web, uh, Wunderkarten, uh, they all recovered. As we know, Google announced that um, the Penguin now runs in real time. The question will be for every one of us who's doing SEO or link building, what does real time really mean? My presumption is uh, that they now have a cron job that gets executed from time to time and uh, makes uh, or analyzes the link graphs and uh, does the update now automatically. Um, that makes sense because you can only evaluate the amounts of link, links built uh, over a certain period of time. You need time as a factor um, in that equation. Very interesting uh, is that two weeks ago, this is um, uh, home24.de, the domain I was just talking about. Um, we have uh, another spike uh, and plus in visibility where we presume that there was a second iteration of the Penguin update. I don't know if uh, this has been going through the English webmaster uh, chats, but uh, nice to know. What's also currently happen happening is that Google is doing a lot of crawls. You see that here, about 100,000 pages in average on that. And this is not um, in any way related to uh, uh, faster server response times. It is uh, related to Google doing testing and updates. You see that here as well. That's um, a daily tracking for customer websites, smaller website, you see that uh, this here is the top 10, top 30, and top 100 keywords in a sum diagram. And here, apparently, Google is doing a test, having seen hmm, maybe the results are not that good, and uh, rankings are coming back. Another very current uh, topic is about uh, is um, the ranking factors from search metrics. They are doing the study every year. Um, I only have the data from 2015 because um, I've been told that uh, they are waiting to see how Penguin is, uh, you know, uh, doing and um, what, what they need to gather data and um, then do the new study. What is very interesting is that the amount of backlinks on uh, position one is very, very high, whilst the referring domains is not. So you can presume that these domains here top uh, one, two, three, four have been doing a lot of excessive link building. When going back and thinking a little a bit uh, about links, you could uh, say that on position one with uh, only that much amount of uh, uh, domains referring to that, they have been having a lot more than just one link from a domain, which is kind of logical if you um, tend to recommend someone because you think, uh, think that th th their services are good, um, then uh, you're probably going to link to them more than once. So maybe interesting for link builders. Another very interesting topic is about the page load times. 
you see that uh, on position one and two, we have about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 seconds. So having a fast website and fast loading website is um, very important if you want to rank in top positions. Something else interesting, because we talk about term weights today, is um, the amount of words on the top positions. You see that it's an average 800 words for position one, for position two, it's slightly higher. That's probably um, <clears throat> people that want to rank for the term but use too many words and not uh, being as short as they could to make their point. Relevant terms, this is something uh, that are, we are going to discuss as well. Uh, we are calling that proof keywords, so 40% of the websites, uh, excluding uh, Wikipedia, have proof keywords in their rankings. Let me tell you a little bit about my week. On Tuesday, my admin called me and said, well, we are going to make some changes. It will only take five, uh, 10 minutes. That was at 1,500 hours. I was done at 1.30 on Wednesday morning when I went to bed. 7.30 till 1,600. I had a lot of customer satisfaction management. <laughs> um, Wednesday continued, uh, we had a lot of uh, debug, debugging time, um, solutions were found and we called the subcontractor because we needed to change the records of the domains that are pointing to the servers and uh, asked them to create a script for us. At 2 a.m. on Thursday, I got a call of a colleague saying, Chris, your website is not working. I said, good, fine, I'm going back to sleep. And I woke up at 5 o'clock and checked the domain robot. Well, what can I say? Only novices need A records because their scripts have been taking all A records out of that. So that was my uh, Thursday. I wanted to fly at 1012. Uh, no, 10.25, but I couldn't apparently and had to take a later flight. So let's come to the point of the whole presentation. Today I want to, to tell you a little about information retrieval, TF, IDF, um, what the optimization tools that we have at hand are showing us, how to read the data to achieve the best uh, results and ultimately optimize the com content, and uh, a few optimization measures from the study itself. If we have time left, I don't know. Um, we may uh, think about a couple keyword terms of your websites if this is um, at all interesting for you. In my eyes, uh, information retrieval is the process of obtaining data from documents to be able to tell them apart and uh, think about how to rank the document in a search engine. This technique is not new, uh, it is old actually. The basic information retrieval technologies that are used in search engines uh, date back to 1972. Let's talk a little bit about TF-IDF. And uh, before we are going into that, I would like to say goodbye to keyword density and prove to you in a mathematical way why this is the case. So the basic calculation of keyword density is um, the total number of, um, uh, you, uh, of keywords that I'm using um, divided by the total number of um, words that are used in one document, that could be one HTML file. Mm -hmm. um, and then we multiply it by 100 to have uh, the, the correct percentage value. If you're a professional and if you don't want to do that, and then you can do that, of course, as well. So for, for a density value of 5%, we have the keyword 100 times in the document. Divide that by 2,000 words. That's the total amount of words in the document. Multiply that with 100, and then we have a keyword density of 5%. Now, I would like to present to you the lorem ipsum hipster generator and show you why keyword density absolutely does not make any sense. <clears throat> so, I chose the, I chose the uh, term Joomla SEO and you see, this is all very hipster, I, uh, iPhone, Deuce, food, truck, do, Megan's art party, and so on and so forth. Now, one of the questions is, will this document rank in any way and uh, in any way high in search engines? What would you suggest? No. 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 Good. It not make sense in the text. Yes. The problem is, if we can, uh, if we can see that it doesn't make sense in a text, then we will not have any fun to have a mathematical sound solution for telling documents apart in a way that it makes sense for humans. That is why 
the use of keyword density is uh, an absolute no-go if you want to be a professional. Um, but what if it was uh, just a normal text with the keywords in? If the text, we, we get into that. Okay. We'll get into that. So for Joomla SEO, the document will not uh, rank at high position, positions. It doesn't make sense because it lacks proof keywords. And to proof keywords, we are going to come uh, back a little later when we are going into the document analysis. Uh, could someone um, please tell me when I have 30 minutes? No, I don't need that. I have a time display here. Um, let us talk a little bit about TF, IDF and how Google is basically weighing terms. So this is the formula. I hope you all understand that. <laughs> Peter, would you like to plug in the values and do the calculations? 42. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, if, if you go into that and if you would like to analyze that, um, then you will have to have a lot of uh, calculation power and a lot of crawl power because basically what you have to do is analyze all the documents containing um, the term I and put them in a whole document corpus. In German we call that Vereinigungsmenge, I don't know, it's probably the unity number uh, in English but um, as, as you may have imagined, I didn't have as much time to prepare as I wanted. Um, what this tells us is that the more frequently a word is used in all of the documents, then it is uh, less, less, um, less able to tell all the documents apart. So if you go at it and if you have, uh, in, in, in a lot of English uh, documents, you have the terms he, she, you, they, it, and um, the more often these words are used, the IDF um, dampening factors um, are going to be very high so that this document or that this way of using the formula will not make you need uh, stop words. In, in coding, when, when you go at it and you want to analyze a document, then you often have to use stop words, words that you take out because they absolutely, they are, they are so commonly used that they are not um, good for telling documents apart. Okay, now let's go to my case study, SEO um, Cologne. I have some bad news because I announced that this study has been ranking very, very high uh, in search engines. But as we know, there was uh, a penguin update, which basically happened here. <coughs> so th that makes you see that uh, you know, in terms of term weights and optimization, we had uh, very long-lasting top positions for um, the study. By the way, I've, I've done that to obtain customers. So in, in the essence, um, I had about one, one customer a month coming in there and uh, asking for services. So the, the total turnover uh, I made with the study was about 90,000 euros. When you compare that, I used about 60 hours to create the study, then that was a well worth investment in terms of doing content. Um, so last week, uh, last week, last year, I was in, on SEO camp Campix and um, I had, uh, let's call it a professional uh, disagreement with some colleagues. And uh, what I think that they did is they went to a website where you can buy links and uh, links they did buy, as you can see. So this is the amount of referring domains and you see that it's very, very unnatural uh, in, in the way that um, there are more, a lot more over in average. What I wanted to see, I, I immediately saw that uh, something is happening here and that someone is doing um, uh, black hat SEO with my website to damage it. But what I wanted to know is whether Google is as good in uh, filtering that out. So we see that all these links are, by the way, um, a PHPBB uh, profile spam. And um, of course, these hacked PHPBB forums aren't online that long, so that's why the, the links also are disappearing over time. I didn't do a disavow in the Google Webmaster Tools because I wanted to know, as I said, um, whether Google is able to distinguish that. My best guess is they can't, even though they 
tell us that. Um, and uh, with the new Penguin update, you see that the rankings in the essence declined. We are going to see whether it's going to come back. There may be reserve courses um, that caused the drop here because uh, maybe other websites have a better uh, evaluation as mine. Maybe because there is a date in the ranking study uh, which says 1st of October 2015, maybe it is outdated now. Um, I always tell my customers never ever uh, use uh, date and timestamps in the document text directly, uh, which is something that you should take home with you. Uh, now, let me show you a little bit about the study. <coughs> Oops, sorry. <coughs> so you see, um, it's, it's in German, but uh, no matter, you see that uh, we have a table of contents. You also see that we have rank tracking uh, from, from the Manhattan tool. You see that I'm using the term SEO Köln um, a lot of times. Pete, why are you doing a photo of that right now? Oh, okay. But, but yeah, it's... Okay, ju just Google it and try finding it at some point. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I also did is um, I uh, named the pictures uh, SEO Cologne um, and I put um, alt... No, let me see, where is it, where is it, where is it? Alt text in, in here. Um, Using using keywords, which Im which improves the within document frequency of the term that we want to optimize for, so that that's that's very very basic optimization measures. Um, use the keyword a little more often in the document, but don't over exaggerate it. You know, if uh, if if you have two hundred words and. Uh, you use the term uh, 10 or 20 times, then Google will tell you that this, this is not the quality we want. And of course, the documents get unreadable. How many words? Yes. Uh, I think 3,600 or something like that. Uh -huh. um, I don't know what, what the relative uh, or the, the density uh, would be because uh, I for simply forgot. Um, so. Let's go into uh, what the tools are telling us and how we do that correctly. For a customer, I had prepared um, the calculation with Excel. Now, what, what I have done with the document that we are analyzing, um, I went uh, in and um, we saw how many, how many times um, this term was used in the document and then we started doing uh, the calculations. So th these values, uh, the within document frequency, they simply come from one page. The IDF in um, analyzing one document always is one. Um, in that case, it doesn't matter that it's 0 0.69 because uh, we are applying that number everywhere for finding out um, what the WDF IDF values in the documents are you simply multiply the within document frequency with the inverse document frequency. Later on, um, you have to take into account how many, how many um, documents are indexed with Google. This is uh, row F, number of documents in google.de. You apply a logarithm and then uh, you add the values within document frequency with the inverse document frequency and you multiply them by a factor of four. When you go into the German market, then uh, Karl Kratz um, instituted this uh, BDF, EDF, um, and uh, then you often read that it's BDF uh, times P times IDF. The P just is a factor to make the graph look good and uh, this, in the essence, then is the graph. I have water. So you see that the term Freitagswechsel, Freitagswechsel is because the holiday home rental offers to um, uh, arrive and go out on Friday 
is a, a term that is um, the best term for telling the, the terms of the document apart. So Freitagswechsel is a term that is only indexed with 1940 documents with Google. So in that, in that sense, it's very good to make, make it differ from other documents and tell it apart. So then I went in and um, had done that for Joomla SEO. What is interesting here is that the term EF SEO is uh, very, very good in the um, TF IDF scores because EF SEO only has 3,890 documents in the Google index. Now, a novice would go in and say, okay, when I want to rank for Joomla SEO, I have to put the term EF SEO in there. No, that's not the case. Um, that's why I showed you the calculations. EF SEO is the one single term that is best for differentiating documents with the term Joomla SEO because it is a term that only is occurring in 3,890 documents. So let's go into onpage.org and um, let's have a look how you do that correctly in terms of proof keywords. refresh it so that we see the graph correctly. Is that good? No, it's not good for you. So what OnPage is doing uh, is in the essence, they, they go at it and they analyze the top 20 documents. Then they take out all the text of the documents and put it into one document corpus. And then they tell you that the term EF sale has been in two of the documents ranking in the top 20 positions that the total term frequency is 18. They calculate the TF-IDF and tell you what the value is. So this document then, or this term then is here at the graph, the highest and best position because as I told you, it's valid for telling the documents ranking for Joomla SEO part. Um, what you need to know in terms of optimizing your document, documents, and Pete, there we are coming into what makes sense, is that there are <coughs> proof keywords, so-called proof keywords. Proof keywords are keywords that prove the thematical focus of the document. So for Joomla um, SEO, let me apply the proof keyword filter. That is very good value. So for Joomla SEO, you should have in the SEO, Joomla, SEF, plugin, and what is that, keywords? Is that keywords? That is keywords. Yeah, if you apply a proof keyword filter of about, I don't know, apply a little less, uh, then we see we have jQuery in there. <coughs> Frontend self URLs, metadata on page, Suchmaschinen Optimierung. Okay, apparently I scraped. Yeah, I scraped the uh, the German uh, values. And uh, the the concept of proof keywords is that they occur in a lot of the twenty documents that you have scraped. So if you want to optimize your document, then you need to ensure that you have your proof keywords in that document. And for the for finding the proof keywords, onpage.org is a very very good tool. Mm -hmm. um, what um, um, they, they also can scrape data for the English market. Um, we could do that here. Does anyone have a website he wants optimized? Nobody dares. Nobody dares. Pete, do you want? <laughs> Go ahead with mine. What? Go ahead with mine. That's fine. For what keyword? Web Oh. 
it's HTTPS, correct? Yeah. WW? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. What I did right now, of course, I told Google scrape um, uh, scrape the top positions in Google for web entwicklung, web development, and uh, then I applied another filter that analyzed David's website. Let's quickly open that so that anyone can see that. So this is the Joomla website of David. Who was that? I know this guy. I don't oh, know. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, now let's go back in there. And um, let me see when we apply proof keyword filter. Oh, I see. Apparently, in the document scrape right that time, uh, <sighs> It would probably be worthwhile to add typo three and magento. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, 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 this is why I didn't like CO. It just doesn't make sense. Well, you can always say I do. I don't do typo three and yeah. magento. Yeah, of course you. Of course you could do that. But the question is, what what will that do with your texting? And uh, then again, right now we were looking for a one-word term. Uh, web entwicklung. Uh, if we do that for web entwicklung Joomla, then the results would most likely uh, look a lot of uh, more different than than these. But if you want to rank top positions, I don't know where would you be situated with web entwicklung right now. Uh, I think all Germany uh, nine. Okay. Which not too bad. Yeah. Well, this is a, a low proof keyword filter. If we apply the filter a little higher. You see that web entwicklung and CMS is something where you are good. You could use that a little more in your documents to to send the one one unique signal. Um, uh, so just uh, improve the frequency of the word in the document. But uh, and again, one would have to ask how holistical that is. And we are only having a look um, at a document level. I mean, the document isn't the only document we are analyzing then there is user behavior, then there is links that influence that, uh, the, the ranking of the documents. Right now we are only having a look at the document level. For um, uh, Germany, there is a, a tool from my dear colleague Thomas Mintnich, he's the man with the black hat, uh, from termlabs.io. Um, uh, Thomas has uh, a completely self-crawled index for the German web, which uh, is a lot to crawl and to take in, so they are doing the indexation themselves. And uh, Thomas' tool is uh, very, very good um, in doing analyses for German websites, mostly because um, the tool can analyze the main content. Um, a lot of misconceptions about um, how you could rank good in Google are also uh, done by people that I've been doing that by the way too uh, that say okay uh, put in the SEO my, my company name is 1A SEO usually um, written together so right here I said 1A uh, space SEO to improve the um, term frequency for the word SEO in the article but Google is very very good in telling the main content apart for Google this part here scrolling down would be the main content to anal analyze the document. Um, a lot of shops are, um, you know, investing a lot of money in doing so-called SEO texts. Um, there is a website that is called anwalt.de. It is a lawyer's website. And what they do is um, they display the, um, the lawyers of um, a certain city department or of a certain city. And on the right side, you always see uh, an optimized an optimized SEO text that has the lawyer location a lot in the texting. But actually, this is not what Google finds to be the main content. The main content is the list of lawyers under the URL city and type of lawyer. Um, 
that's why I don't know what they invested in content um, or in this so-called SEO text content. It will probably be a lot of money, while it was completely needless to spend that money. Yeah. So, if if you are optimizing uh, for for categories or for categorizing lawyers at a certain location, then you need the good category list uh, and uh, not the SEO text. Thomas tool uh, is very very good. Um, and very, very scientific. You see that this uh, looks a lot more different than it would be looking uh, with the onpage.org. And you see that in the tool you can analyze the main content or important tags, for example, the H1 tags or uh, the, the tags in the uh, image alt uh, tags to see what are people doing to get to top positions and to really have a quick overview on what to do better in that sense. The ones of you that uh, would like to know more can also have a look at the information retrieval book here. Now I have about 12 more minutes. My preparation time for the talk was about five hours and you know why. <laughs> So, if anyone has questions, we could go ahead and analyze pages. Is it on page good for a Russian website? Uh, I or don't do you know. Other service? For, for Russian websites, I really, really don't know. And I don't know uh, if, if they are able to do the Unicode encoding, but we could have a look. I mean, I can do the Kirillian uh, keyboard, you know, to, to really enter that right now. Um, but I know that OnPage is able to um, uh, scrape at a different location. So we have Germany, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, now as you see, Kazakhstan. I haven't uh, used OnPage uh, for a long time. I actually just booked an account here. Um, because I, I use Thomas's tool from a scientific point of perspective. Thomas's tool only for German, right? Right now, yes. Yeah. But uh, you see that, that the menu items are in English, so you know what he is going to do next, expand. Um, I know that Thomas's tool is used by uh, a lot of uh, newspapers um, and a lot of sale agencies because it uh, has a simple... Um, API that is uh, JSON based, mm -hmm. so uh, you could uh, fetch the data right into your management system and tell the people creating the texts what terms to use more and what terms to use less. Okay. Yep. And uh, how much does it cost? Uh, on page, on page, or Thomas's term labs. Thomas. Um, <laughs> the tool is in a, a closed beta right now. Uh, if you want to apply for, account, for an account, uh, tell, Joomla, uh, tell, Joomla, tell Thomas uh, that you came from the um, presentation with Christopher and that you would like to have an account and then Thomas will provide you with an account. Um, Thomas uh, is testing a lot of user cases right now. A, you know, the heavy users, uh, the agencies, the news websites and things like that. Uh, and of course also the smaller customers to A, find out uh, how much the system will cost under load and who will have to pay what amounts of money because right now he doesn't know that, he just wants to provide a good result and a stable system when going live. Do you think in Joomla we don't need now to put uh, meta text for keywords, description? Uh, no, no, no. Um, the, the meta keywords tag uh, has never been used by Google. The way that they have been doing information retrieval has always been the way that I've been telling you. Um, and the meta keywords have never been used by Google. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, if, if uh, five websites have the same meta keywords, how do you tell them apart? Okay. If they have the same meta keywords, all things being equal, how do you tell Means them apart? Not necessary to put them at all. No. Um, my recommendation is always uh, take the meta keywords out. You, of course, need the title tag, you need the meta description. Um, a meta description that is uh, very interesting for, for your results so that you get clicks. For posting uh, social networks description appears usually. 
Yeah, but in social networks, you would uh, use the open graph protocol uh, yeah. in in in, the, in that sense. Yeah. Does Google use uh, the bounce rates in Google Analytics or uh, ranking websites? I mean, if you have a bounce rate on page four hundred percent, there. How, how can you have four hundred percent bounce rate? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So they might but the question, the, the question is, you know, the, the bounce can only be measured um, if, if, or the bounce rate that you see that is measured in Google Analytics always has the following click path. You come in, then you go to a second page, and then you probably bounce because the one click um, from coming in to the next click to the next site makes you able to um, measure the time that the people have been on the page. When, when you go into the concept of search session, that means um, you go in, you search for something. Then you find a result and you click on that result. Um, Google knows, I think 2012, they, they have been granted uh, a patent which uh, was about uh, read detection. So they are, with, with a machine learning algorithm, they are able um, to measure the time that a user would need to extract the relevant information for the search query in the document that is presented. So if that time is, or if the user gets to the site and is on the site a little longer than that, you know, isn't bouncing back to the SERPs right away, then this is most likely a good signal. Mm -hmm. If the user um, bounces back to the SERPs because um, he, found, uh, he or she found the information and refines the search query then because what of you know what the user read uh, user got the impression okay i need to refine my search query then this will not harm this document mm -hmm. so that in in that sense there there are good bounces and and bad bounces and you have to see the bounces in the relation to the search session yeah? thank you additional questions just comment, it's very worthy information I gave us. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Yep. Um, do you have experience with over uh, optimization with uh, too perfect? Well mostly mostly these these documents um, don't don't rank. Uh, when when you go at um, an optimization right now um, with a with a document, uh, let's do that right here because I can easily explain that to you. Then Google is asking uh, the document a couple of questions. A, do you have holistic content? So content that is a very broad and informative uh, perspective. Um, can you prove your thematical focus? That means are there proof keywords used in there? And are you spam? And the spam signal. Um, let me add the URL for comparison. Apparently that didn't work. So, you know, as, as if with, with the important keywords for the optimization, for example, Suchmaschine Optimierung, that search engine optimization, SEO apparently, um, and uh, Köln for Cologne, um, if you send a strong term signal, then you are above the values of all the other documents um, that, that is displayed here. Um, when you get problems is when back here you are well above the corpus of the documents that are analyzed because usually this is a spam signal or it um, is an indication that uh, you want to good up for SEO Cologne. So the thematical focus is moved here. But um, right now uh, I, I'll go in and uh, check what I can do, build a couple of new good links. I disavowed the other links and uh, then I will probably also write about uh, the assholes having bought uh, 300 uh, links with uh, no i'm not saying where you can buy that <laughs> no uh i i saw it and uh, we had a, a certain sort of professional disagreement i would call it, <laughs> <laughs> they try to prove it. and and they try to prove it yes <laughs>
which is an asshole's gesture, but uh, <laughs> that's the way it is. Any more questions? Good, then we are done. You have a question? question. Yes. Uh, I'm not too knowledgeable in the area, but huh? I was just wondering, uh, I mean, Google also personalizes search results. Yes. Can you uh, uh, take that into account? No, 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 you can't. With, with all the tools, you, you can. Uh, they store that in a cookie or in their, in, in their session storage when you are logged in. Um, that, that's something that you just can't measure from outside. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you.